welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. Sorry. Because clearly you, as the EP, haven't heard the chair rubbing against the wall or the table to fix it on your own, so I took the liberty of doing so. Why, why do you... You have the most impeccable timing. I know. Of anyone I've ever known in my life. You're welcome. Like, we were last recorded last week and last week you knew that, that chair was broken up against the wall allegedly and yet you wait until after you wasn't bring I, me in wasn't i recording a whole episode with a small child because i'm that boss excuse me yeah you didn't do that last week yes i did what are you talking about last week was savi's episode oh <laughs> i thought you meant solace not with her she was just I was holding her. How was I going to move a chair while holding her? No, I'm saying the whole, there was a whole week between that. No, as soon as we finish, we wrap and I exit, I'm done. Because I got things to do. Well, that that proves that you're not really EP because EP is never done. I'm busy funding this podcast. Oh, all by yourself? Partially. Partially what? Partially. Partially. Okay, what's the, calm down. Partially. Um, I'm not here to do this. What are you here to do? This. <laughs> the football guy from <laughs> Georgia. So he's clowning because I final I wrote down. I had topics. I tracked them. Did you even check the note? Why no, would I check didn't. them? No. I, I stopped checking the notes when I realized you weren't putting stuff in there. I put stuff in there. Okay. It gives you a notification. No, it doesn't. It's supposed to, but you don't get notifications conveniently for really things. Don't. Anyway, so I I filled out the board, and one of the topics at the time I didn't know, I didn't remember old boy's name, and I don't want to remember his name. So he's just that's just who he's gonna be. That's one of the greatest like football players I've ever. Never heard his name before. Like, well, you don't really follow football. Ago. I do. Just he wasn't relevant. Cle- clearly, clearly you don't. He well, the more is his. his Historically speaking, you don't really follow yeah, I don't football. Do, I don't do football history. I mean, outside of like Patriots football history, but. Yeah. I feel you. On Patriots football history? No, just oh. in general. Did I say how I felt? I'm just saying. I feel you. Because you said you don't really know historically about football. <laughs> you know, from a historical sense. What do you, uh. This is an old shirt. Yes, yeah, the the shirt's a minute old, but the designer I got it from Five Below. But the designer is a black creative, and she had had this whole line at Five Below maybe a year or two ago. So when I got to the store, I actually went with mom, and we got to the store. My mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They they only had like double XL or small. So I bought this shirt on faith that I'd be small enough to fit it. I'm still not quite small enough to fit it. You should have just got the double XL and shrunk it. No. I feel like people always think that you can shrink shirts to make them look cute. That's not my that's not my lane. That's not my no. that's not my gift. That's true. So I just I'd rather buy smaller and and make myself skinny. Because all the shirts of mine that you've shrunk aren't cute. I don't shrink your shirt. Yes, you do. <laughs> you shrunk. I remember I my sweater. Doing my remember, own laundry. You remember for... my sweater that you shrunk? <laughs> Did I shrink that? I thought your mom shrunk that. No, you shrunk it. The wool one? I don't know. Yeah. That was your mom. No, you shrunk your it. Your mom shrunk that one. You shrunk one too. I shrunk a shirt. I didn't shrink the wool you one. You shrunk a sweater. But you gave me that sweater after. No, I got. No, there was a sweater that shrunk. It was always like miniature. There was a wool sweater like, that shrunk. It was like a premature size. There was a wool sweater that your mom shrunk. It's okay. But it fit me. And so no, this is something totally different. Okay, I just don't want you to put that. That John went from screen. that John went from like medium to premature. This is why you should just do your like own laundry. Like Savi, because I've fit. been doing my own laundry Sabi for years. That joint. I've never shrunk anything, and I don't do. And my clothes would be more 
something. Oh, uh, you're close. Particular. You're, you're close, right? No, I expand. <laughs> There's a difference. There's a complete, complete difference. <laughs> okay. Just, I just want to put that out there. I'm, okay. I'm fine. I'm yeah, fine with yeah, making yeah. sure that the people know the facts. Expand is such a <laughs> disrespectful way to speak about yourself. <laughs> I expand. I mean, I, I, on shriek, I expand. I mean, how else? How else was I supposed to say it? You just say I've grown. I've no. put on a little bit of weight. No, I've expanded. You just expand. It just sounds. I've, I've expanded. No, whatever. I've done everything but get taller. But okay. Yeah, so. So we're. Uh, you can't see it, but I'm gonna move my iPad so y'all can see it. We got our. I got our candle. From uh, from Can essence, we talk. Can we talk, which seems fitting to light for a for a podcast, right? So here you are, essence. It's shout out to good. shout out to E. Ooh, I got too close. I ain't gonna lose no follicles. I'm gonna singe, singe my nose. Yeah, wouldn't be wouldn't be good. Yeah. Uh, I'm rocking my. Alma mater. Mm-hmm. Which is crazy because I think it was like a, almost a forty forty dollars shirt. I meant to tell you while you were in Greensboro to go to UNCG and buy me some. Something. I wasn't I wasn't there for you. I don't care. It was my homecoming weekend. Oh, remind <laughs> me that I have to pick a bone with you about that. Um, bone about what? About your homecoming weekend trip. What about it? I'm not let's just, no, let's just, no, let's just get, let's get out of the uh, way. No. no, oh no, last week he was all. Miss Transparency, yeah. and now you want to you want to conceal stuff. You. Saving me about what? I, we can that take I didn't, this that You didn't go. No, I knew I wasn't going. I had to work a, a conference. Oh, okay. So what could you be upset about? We'll take this offline. Nah, let's put it on. If it's if it's bad, I'll just take it out. Oh really? Um, I'm wearing a shirt from my alma mater. They mm-hmm. say it's Under Armour, which I guess is why there was such a markup. It feels nice. I mean, even if it was champion, there would have been a markup. It feels nice. It, it looks nice. I got to see how it how it holds up after a wash. <laughs> I'm just I'm saying. I'll wash it. But um. So what's been going on? How was your How was your week? I don't know, David. You tell me. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. My how was week your- has been fine. It's only Monday. It is Monday. I mean, you're weak since. I don't even remember. You felt since you recorded a whole podcast with a two year old across your lap. I don't even remember. I will say the highlight was her reaction to seeing herself on the screen. It was pretty dope. That's me. Sonoma got pretty excited too. Yeah. We got to have Sonoma on. But Sal's was just like. Serious? We should have recorded with Sonoma when she was still itty bitty. Because now she's too wiggly. So she wouldn't sit there. She can wait her turn like Sovereign did. I'm sure Rush Vibes will we still be. We had an opportunity to record with Sonoma, but we didn't. And I, I'm not. I, I, I don't want to put old an old wrinkly baby on. No, first of all, no kids that exit me are wrinkly. <laughs> every they baby come, is every baby no, is wrinkly. They come with great plump, fresh skin because I have a womb that provides nutrient skin care to the children. The baby was wrinkly. She was not. Every baby's every new baby's wrinkly. She was not wrinkly. Peely, and wrinkly, peely, peely, ashy. Yeah. You, you're not gonna come for my kids. Um, I mean, she's my kid too. I got my hair retwisted so you can actually see my. Yeah, it's about time. You had like an inch and a half of new growth. I did, but I can't say much because I. Can't. And I didn't notice it until I actually showed you that day in the in the bathroom. I was like, oh wow, it's really. I, I can't say much because I had my braids in for a hot minute. But I yeah. I don't have as much time to like the effort of which to take out braids in comparison to getting a retwist. I feel like are not the same. Well, well, yeah, because you do it yourself. Mm-hmm. But I have to go I have to work around and go. Yeah, to work around the schedule. So it's and that's really the only reason I haven't done it because um, if it's a weekend, are we doing anything? And there was there was been there were like four or five weekends in a row where we were kind of doing Active. something or someone was doing something um and i can't really go during the week just because of of work and then picking the kids up and now my my uh loctician because it's getting darker early she doesn't work as late during the week so so 
as much as I'm so tired of this man who is clearly in the middle of a. I'm trying to read what it says. You can't read that? Puff, puff beef. Beef. I just couldn't get the puff F. Puff beef. Oh, looks like a T. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I just ruined your, <laughs> your segue. Go ahead. Transition. Come on. I, I can't get it back. You give a re- you're giving real low vibrations right now. So I need okay, you to. Okay, so one, we're going to stop yeah. saying I need you to pick I'm it up. I'm already tired. I'm tired of seeing people post it, reenact We it, had a whole episode named it. Low Vibration yeah, well, Vibes. Now, now it's old. It's not old. It is old. I don't no, want to talk about vibrations anymore. Okay, um, let's talk about some beats. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yo, I was ready to go to bed. I came. I only came down because I had just made chili cheese. Well, it's fries. a good thing you came down because I, I, I was pretty sure we confirmed that we were recording tonight. No, there's like I'd have been down. There, there, I'd have been down here by my. I'm like, when, when is she there coming are usually down? Two confirmations like of recording sessions, and I didn't get the second one, so I was like, oh, we gonna be good. No, we're not. That was before we recommitted ourselves. <laughs> You gonna give me a promise right now? We too? committed ourselves to the podcast. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Kanye West. Yay. Kanye Nicodemus West. Um, that's the name I've given him. I'm not his mother. But I just feel like that I feel like Nicodemus is the appropriate um appropriate name for him. So I don't really know what triggered this. I think um Puff Love daddy lion whatever his name is uh i think he got tired of kanye Diddy. is he still diddy i oh. thought he was lion or no that's snoop snoop lion diddy okay what are you drinking by the way uh this re- <laughs> i've had this bottle of it's trash like a pre-mix margarita like a malted margarita, so it's not tequila in the fridge since like Sonoma was born. One of my coworkers had like gifted it to me. Like she did like a Target order and sent it. And it's been in the fridge for <laughs> almost a year. And I was just like, I want that space back in my fridge. So I just poured it and I'm I'm just drinking it. Cause I also didn't want to pull out the stool and climb the stool and climb the cabinet to get to all the top shelf, literal it's, it's top good. shelf liquor. Yeah, it's good. I just didn't want to finish it. Cause like when I have something and I like it, I don't want to finish it immediately. So I didn't want to finish it. And in my attempts of not finishing it, I let it sit for age for a year. Okay. Almost a year, like nine months and change. Hey, so, um, real quick, quick aside. I just want to let everybody know I'm one, well, kind of like three, but officially one day into my two weeks off. And it's, it was great. Congratulations. Although I did, I, I did a little bit of work you today. Did. Hopefully nobody. Somebody from work says this. But, um, Carl, you need to come. Don't, don't be calling my. <laughs> don't do stuff like that. <laughs> God, you need to comp him a day. My bad. Calling my boss's government like that. My bad. Dang. Sorry. Um, but it feels good. It feels good to be off for two weeks. I bet it does. I, um, I wouldn't know what that's like to be off for two weeks if I have not had a kid. You got to give it the winning team. You know why you're able to be off for two weeks? Because I had a kid. Because I have unlimited PTO. It's called my time, actually. You're on paternity, but this is the rest of your paternity leave. I just took time off. It still falls in the year, so it's it's your paternity leave. No, I could ask for two weeks off, and as long as he said yes, then I could have two weeks off. It's the rest of his paternity leave. Because it's called my time. Mines. Anyway, uh, I feels it, It feels great. So I'll report. Did. I'll report back next episode how, how it's going. Go ahead. No. <laughs> Go on. Mm-mm. I wasn't done. You cut me off, and I was. I was trying to finish my aside. Go ahead, man. Because mm-hmm. this is what you do. What I was. I was literally trying. No, I wasn't gloating. I was just saying I had two. I gloated last week. You didn't have an issue with it then. I said my black ass is about to be off for two weeks, and you laughed. But you interrupted me because I was already, you've interrupted my transition. You've actually ruined my transition I'm sorry. in multiple ways, multiple times in like a six minute segment. Sorry. May I'll, I speak now? I'll be quiet. Oh, now you want to be quiet. So I'm going to finish talking. And you're not going to say anything. <laughs> you said you want to do it. Go ahead and do it. 
Go on. First of all, stop speaking like this old Southern black man. Uh, what? You say that to the kids too, and it literally drives me what crazy. What do I say? Go on. Go like, on. No. Yeah. Just say go on. Or carry. Like, just go on. You just sound like an old Southern black man who's sitting on I his mean, porch in a rocking chair. I did. Sp- sitting by the dock I- of the bay. <laughs> First of all, I thought we were trying. I thought you were trying to get to Kanye. Why are we critics critiquing? I don't know how I speak. I don't know. You just you, you turned my whole spirit. Like now, you just gonna start pulling things out, pulling turned, pet peeves out. You turned my I'm whole spirit. Literally, just trying to say it. You just shifted. Go, go on. I enunciated that time. Go on. Just continue. Anyway. Cause you say it to the kids sometimes too. Like you even said, you even, <laughs> Bro, I really, you even said not get like what? Not get. No. Yeah. No. yeah. How, how I speak to the children is, no, is for me. Cause then you're going to turn them into little country bump. I was already twangs ran- randomly. I'm taking her to New York. Take her. Get her some Northern. Anyway. So what I've been trying to say for the past 10 minutes and I'm pointing and I realize <laughs> that you all cannot see the board that's over here. So I'll I, put like a little graphic up. I just yeah. look crazy. Beep. This is, this is, see, we weren't supposed to record today. Right, we, 20, we 20 minutes and we haven't talked I, about I anything. I can't get in sync. Um, so Kanye and Diddy are beefing. Well, I think Kanye's beefing with Diddy. I think Diddy is just diddy and diddy doesn't care so i think diddy essentially got annoyed fed up with whatever kanye is going through we're gonna call it a mental health crisis um so he reached out and initially i was like oh wow in my head i didn't realize like celebrities texted each other i don't know how i thought they communicated with one another but i I thought it was cool like oh diddy picked up his phone because he has kanye's number and he just shot him a text like an i message at that so i was like oh interesting i don't know why like i know they're regular people this isn't me like i reckon but i don't know i figured someone's assistant would have sent the text like hey kanye this is adrian diddy's assistant he's concerned about what you're portraying whatnot but no diddy like picked up his own phone um so when i'm reading this i'm picturing diddy in you know when rev run used to end his episodes of um remember that reality show he and his kids had run's house and he'd be in the bathtub with the bubbles and he'd be texting on like the Blackberry. That's how I pictured Diddy was communicating with Kanye. So Diddy sends this thread and Kanye takes it from zero to like 200. Even reading the thread, it, it, it made absolutely no sense what Kanye was saying. Um, which again is why I think this is a mental health crisis. So essentially like Diddy was telling him, you're not helping black people right now. Like what you're doing chill out let's connect let's let's when you're in town i'm in town i can't remember which one of them's in town i got the thread on my phone um but let's connect and let's have a conversation and kanye took it to just a whole new level he was on that like you ain't got the answer sway kanye like you know when he was jerking and all that um and he essentially was like i'm gonna share this 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 conversation i'm gonna put it out there not that diddy was saying anything crazy but Kanye's just doing the most. So I just wanted to see if you had seen the conversation, if you had any thoughts on the conversation, if you plan on speaking in this conversation. Because if not, I'm going to take my butt to bed. Because you got that look. What look? That you're about to do something that's going to trigger me look. <laughs> I'm just sitting here. I'm literally just sitting here waiting for you to speak. You got that look. I'll, I can, I just, I know you. I'll let you get the rundown. And I was just waiting on my. I'm waiting on my cue. I'm, I'm passing it. I want to see. I'm gonna, so what's pull, the, I'm gonna what's, pull it up. What's just, the just? What's the question? What What do you think Kanye is going through? What did you, did you read it? Did you see it? Are you aware of it? I um. I saw it briefly. I didn't. I didn't get too deep into it because I figured it was the usual. Mm-hmm. But he kept saying you fed. Like, is he calling Kanye the fed? Um, maybe, or maybe, he's tr- maybe that's slang for uh, trying to get dirt on somebody, trying to get somebody uh, to react. Because I'm not current with lingo. Uh, as far as I've heard it, in that context, potential context, myself. So, um, 
mean, I said it last week. I just felt like we should stop giving Kanye so much attention, except for when he drops the album. I mean, because all this is is it's, it's all clearly some sort of um, ploy. I I think for attention for something, and usually he has these episodes before a new line or a new new shoe or a new something, and or maybe it maybe is maybe like is boy bad. who called wolf, boy who cried wolf. Maybe there actually is something wrong with him. But I don't really care. I just want to know the new album drops. To be Didn't honest, he just drop an album. Isn't it too soon for another one to drop? It's never too soon. Never. You said something though that yeah. Diddy said that um, Kanye's not helping black people. Is that, is that? Well, I don't know that he actually said that. Um, but that's kind of what I infer. Let me see. Uh. Yeah, as soon as I, le- I land, we'll meet face to face. Send me an address. Um, Puff off also doesn't have good English. Um, Doesn't matter. He's rich. It's wealthy. They said Floyd Mayweather can't read, but he got a billy. He can't read. How that's do you what, sign contracts? That's, that's what they say. You remember when Fifty Cent was like messing with them back in the day, like a few years ago. And then that audio leaked of him trying to read a, uh, I think it was like an ad <laughs> or a commercial or something. Um, I mean, it was it was bad. Yeah, he did say, he said, I'm just trying to talk to you as a black man. And I'm talking to you because this is hurting our people. Stop. Stop what? Stop. You telling me to stop, but that's what did that's he say? That's what he said, stop. Oh. <laughs> I was like, hey, I'm gonna stop before. I, how is it hurting black people? I mean, wearing black, white lives matter and nullifying black lives matter as a organization as not, well, we're not going to talk about them as an organization, but as a mantra that has become worldwide, that is, that resonates with black people to recognize that their lives do matter in this, in every society and they should stand up for themselves. Um, that's hurtful partnering up with Candace Owens, who I didn't know at the time was who was in the picture. And that one particular picture where they're like the way they're looking at each other was concerning. Um, I think they're just friends. I think he's partly at least partly responsible for her kind of blowing up. Cause I think he had, he had shouted her out on Twitter back in the day. He was like, I love the way Candace Owens thinks. Mm. Oh, and, and then course, she became trending. Well, yeah, but thanks. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to say that she's only famous because of Kanye. But I think. I mean, I still don't know. I think it, I don't I know think, her relevance to the greater society, except for she seems like an occasional nuisance to black she, people. She's a conservative, black conservative woman with strong opinions and doesn't back down from them if push push back on. Cool. Um. So there's that. But yeah, I do think he, <laughs> it's tough because I feel like one lone wolf or a handful of lone wolf black people who are just off the grid in terms of their thought don't do much damage. Like Candace by herself, I don't feel does much damage. I do think Kanye, because he has a following and a following of people who seem to continue to stand by him no matter what he does. Um, like, if I'm not mistaken, he had Bob Marley's granddaughter rocking a shirt that said White Lives Matter, um, which is it's not, not cool to Bob um, and his legacy. So I just I just don't get... And again, it it could come right back to being a bait and switch where it's just, I'm trying to stay relevant. I'm just, you know, doing this to spark emotion. Like you said, maybe another album is dropping. I don't know. I'm tired of him. Like I'm, and it's like every time I get tired of him and get ready to write him off, he does something that reignites my tiresomeness and then I have to get retired of him. And it's just annoying. And it's, 
I'm just like, is there no one in his corner who can advise him? And honestly, there isn't because, in my opinion, because I mean, he it wasn't Kim because he was doing this stuff to an extent with her. It's just gotten, you know, crazier. And he took some of it out on her when she was with old boy. But his name's Pete. Old boy will do. He has a name. You, see, you hear that um, he's good. People say oh, now he's going to be with Giselle. Oh, really? Is that yeah. the, is that the new job? He seems to be that that guy. Um, Bou- best to bounce back. But you don't think you don't think he's hurting black people? No, you don't, because you're always devil's advocate. <laughs> All right, I'm just, I'm gonna sit here, and I'll let you I'll let you talk for me. How about that? My bad. I'm sorry. That was my bad. Thank you for acknowledging the error of your ways. Is this the part where you say exactly <laughs> what I just said? <laughs> no, I just, I'm just curious. Like I don't, I don't, I don't see how he's hurting, how he's hurting black people. You don't, not even a little bit. Uh, I, I he wore a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. He wore a t-shirt, like. I mean, there's a there's a street in D.C. It's literally called Black Lives Matter Plaza or Lane oh, yeah. or something like that. Here in Charlotte, we had Tryon had Black Lives Matter written on it. Asheville, you go around the country. Black Lives Matter has made uh, an impact and people have um, through their their action, through their voice. <clears throat> have given legitimacy to the statement and there are people who support it got a neighbor two houses over got a black had a black lives matter mm-hmm. sign in their yard so and they weren't black they were not black most people who had the sign weren't black oh. <laughs> i think the, I, every every time i saw a sign in the yard i drove by the like people who lived there were white it's interesting um allyship so yeah i mean we know we know that white lives matter was a res- was a particular type of response to black lives matter right but it sought to g- delegitimize it but i think it's legitimate based like i see i still see it and i see um uh a lot i still see activists and and people who were very prominent during the summer of 2020 still doing things still pushing for change still pushing for uh, progressive uh, issues. Um, so I, I don't see how one black man wearing a t-shirt uh, more than likely trying to get a rise out of people uh, hurts black people because you don't need Kanye West to legitimize Black Lives Matter. True. So if you don't need him to legitimize it, how could he delegitimize it? Like I just... I look at it as it's Kanye. I guess it's just there's a population of people that he is influencing in that respect. Like how I don't know if you've noticed, um, but I, when Van when he tried to say that slavery was a choice, and Van Lathan um, essentially chewed him out back when Van was working for TMZ. That's starting recirculating because of this instance um, in history. And I still shout out to Van. Yes, um, I still have to go back and rewatch it. I'm an, I'm an admirer. A van, yeah. I actually, I, I really look up to him. Someone in this space, and as as a thought, yeah, he's, he's as a thought a, leader, he's got a great opinion on things, um, and an interesting way of which he delivers that opinion. Um, but that video is resurfacing. Just, I think people are kind of like, you need to tear into your boy again. Um, <laughs> but I, that statement from however many years ago. I'm sure people like stood behind Kanye and were like, oh, you know, that's actually probably a valid point. So I think it's it can hurt black people because there are going to be followers who are both bl- who are black and of other races who will see hear what Kanye does and says and say, well, you know, this is a black man delegitimizing all of these things that, you know, this whole population of people have stood on and maybe from their perspective he's making valid points and 
then that's more work that people who have made progress in terms of changing people's thoughts have to do in in terms of reprogramming their dangerous forms of thinking, if that makes sense. Sure. I think that's fair. That's a fair thing to say. I I guess I'm someone who, um, though I have people that I follow and I'm a big admirer of, Mm -hmm. uh, in in a very, I very rarely do I go along with something just because someone who I admire says, Mm -hmm. it. you know, me, I always look stuff up. I look into things. So it's easy. I guess it's easier for me to say, I was kind of just wearing a shirt. I don't, I don't see Kanye wearing white lives matter outrage. That's not the next step. Me is, well, why is he wearing it? What, what's he, what's his thought process behind it? What could he potentially, what could this be, um, a, 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 a prelude to, mm-hmm. um, or I just look at it and be like, okay, <laughs> like I, but not for, everybody has that maturity. And that's what I'm saying. Like, so for me, it's easy to say it, he's not hurting me. Uh, he doesn't hurt me by wearing that shirt. Because he doesn't have any influence over how I feel about Black Lives Matter, White Lives Matter, or or whatever, or any any issue. I could agree or disagree with him on it, but he's not necessarily influencing how I feel about any particular topic. So, I mean, yeah, I guess you've got impressionable youth, um, people who, you know, get their information from memes. I guess maybe they're more susceptible to following Kanye but I mean if you're that susceptible then <laughs> I don't know maybe you maybe you were already hurt long before Kanye <laughs> started tripping like it was a failure somewhere else way further yeah, down the line than than Kanye so you know maybe there's something to it maybe there isn't but I don't know it's just it's just Kanye being Kanye to me I, I I think he I think if black people or black figures continuously try to make a spectacle of saving Kanye, I think that could potentially do more harm than Kanye doing whatever the hell he's doing because you're bringing attention to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're almost um, authenticating the stuff that he's doing. Whereas if you just let him go ahead and do whatever he's doing, it might resolve the issue might resolve itself, or it might not, and he'll just I mean, continue it, doing what he's doing. But if he's doing it and nobody's reacting, then then does he continue to do it? Do we find out if it's all an act or not? Do we does it does it become uh, evident that maybe he is really struggling with something? Like we don't know because we every time he does something, it's oh kind of kind of kind of kind of kind of. I don't. I just. I think we should maybe take a step back and realize and think about: Are we potentially doing that? We, me. I'm not including the we, but are we doing more harm, amplifying every single thing that he does that that someone deems outlandish, and actually giving him attention for it? Um, is that doing more harm than him just acting a fool out in public? <clears throat> just my thoughts on it. Cool. But we've given enough time to Kanye. What you got? Tom Brady and No, Giselle. that's what I got. What you got? What were you bringing to the table? I was just going to vibe. <laughs> no no uh no script, no plan, just vibes, just vibes. baby. Just vibes, baby. Well. Um Tom Brady and just Giselle. Vibe, just vibes. Yes. This is actually the juicy stuff. Yes. They are slated to be in the divorcing process after, what was it, 13 years? Slated or rumored? Isn't that the same? No, slated means it's... I mean, she's filed and he's getting an attorney. Has she filed? Yeah. Okay. The last I saw, I admittedly haven't read into this either. I've been reading headlines on this, both these topics. Uh, I know that it was rumored that they both hired divorce lawyers. But that was the, that was my last update. Oh, that's not the same as filing. <laughs> I don't know. Getting a divorce. I assumed if you, if, why are you going to hire? 
why would you but it's a rumor it's not fact no she i think i'm pretty sure i I thought she filed and then pretty sure didn't she these are not these are these are not facts okay so so that's what i'm saying like i i don't know if if it actually has if if it's actually real or not but i did see a report that they allegedly both hired divorce lawyers and we were watching um extra no i can't spell her name we were watching extra the other night and i guess somebody some paparazzi got like a really really tight zoom in on her finger i guess it was ringless mm-hmm. but you don't wear your wedding ring either so it's not like but you would zoom in and see that I've got well the before you before we got the tattoos you didn't there are times where you went out without your ring and i haven't worn mine and i don't know how long so okay, but so why hire divorce lawyers if you're not getting divorced allegedly hired a divorce lawyer on tuesday that was three days ago fueling rumors okay so they're fueling rumors they both hired they're getting a divorce so let's let's for the sake since we're here yes uh let's assume that all in all i will say this all indications would be that that's where they're headed Mm -hmm. indications being just what's in the media so rumors rumors of war um so all of this on the heels of Tom Brady having a successful football career with the New England Patriots, go Pats, um, and then transitioning to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, after Gronkowski, wasn't he on the Buccaneers as well? And then he retired. He was on the Pats and retired and came back for the to, to the, the Buccaneers. Yeah. Is he still? Uh, I don't. Th- I don't think he's still playing. Okay. He so did he and Tom both play for the Buccaneers at the same time? Yeah, I think Tom recruited him out of retirement. Oh, so that's just Tom's thing. Like everybody come out of retirement. I guess. But you uh, you're asking me some really tough questions because I don't follow the NFL like that. So okay. Um, Tom's Tom used to be my guy, but um, why is he no longer? Are he's you, not are with you, the are Patriots. You get, oh, okay. Okay, I thought it had something to do with. No, this current care. situation. No, I don't care about that. Um, <laughs> no, it's no, no problem. I, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not happy he's getting a divorce, but it was more so when he was a Patriots and and unpopular opinion. I, I'm formerly a Patriots fan. I now have no allegiance football wise. But if Kaepernick had come back to a team, I would have been allegiant to him. You know what? I think I'm a Broncos fan just because of um, don't say Sierra's that. husband. Don't say that because apparently he's, he's cooked. Is he Ain't doing nothing? Allegedly, I, I'm not watching. I'll, he I'm, got I'm, like a good contract. Yeah, too. like two two fifty mil. I think like all of it's guaranteed. But um, I'm just going based off the memes and stuff I'm seeing off Twitter. Because he didn't even beat the Seahawks. I was like, bro, you have to beat the Seahawks. Streets your first are, game in. Streets are saying that he's cooked. So, oh, dang, but it's, it's relatively early. It's a good thing he married rich. It's, so it's, it's live, still it's still live, early. He can live off Sierra's wealth. He two fifty. He two hundred fifty mil. Okay. Sierra ain't made that much. He's gonna live off of her wealth. Okay. I'm changing the conversation. I'm changing the narrative. He married wealthy. He married up. He married um, notoriety. He married up. I think he's he probably okay. But let's continue. Anyway, so um, they're in Massachusetts. Uh, how long did he play for the Pats? Maybe a long time. I'm trying to think. I was in elementary school. When um, he filled in for Drew Bledsoe and took over. So that might have been Super Bowl 2001. It's a minute. It's been a hot minute. It's been a minute. So played for the Pats. He and Giselle, what, they were married 13, 14 years. So probably like halfway into his career, they started dating because he has a kid from a previous relationship. She's an actress. Neither here nor there. So, um... I'd be knowing. She's just irrelevant, huh? She's gave me kids and now she, don't, now she don't matter. She's on um, <laughs> Blue Bloods. She's Tom Selleck's daughter on Blue Bloods. Um, okay. Name so dropping. Just, Shout so out to Tom Selleck. Yo, Tom Selleck's been around Yo, for a minute. He's, How old is he? He's up there. He's in his 70s. No, that's not up there. He's, 70s he's, is like the new 50. No, it's not. It's 70. Mm-hmm. It's the people in their 70s we need still. need to stop making ages Yo, new ages. 70s. Yo, uh, William Shatner got up on The Mass Singer. Sorry for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. <laughs> at like 90 and was moving okay. around. 70s and like Queen 50. Elizabeth was 96 when she died. I mean, age is age. Allegedly Because you find somebody who's... Allegedly died. Find somebody who's in their Did 70s, you see her? they Have feel you, like they're you in seen their her? 70s. You seen her? Queen Elizabeth? You seen the corpse? No. Did you open casket? I don't How know. How you know she died? 
maybe she's in Cuba with Tupac. Oh, well, number one, Q- Tupac ain't in Cuba. I'm not doing this with you. What? I'm not. <laughs> well, I'm just saying he's not. In, he's he? not in Cuba. He's you think I'm? You think I'm gonna rat him out? I'm not telling you. He's in Compton. <laughs> no. This is not a case of hide in plain sight. If you, if you want in L.A., they will find you. If you in L.A., so I'm not. I'm not telling you where he is. Anyway, so Giselle, supermodel, has a very high net worth. I really only know of Giselle because of Tom Brady. Um, she was not. No offense to her, was not. But I'm also not in the fashion scene to that extent. So especially when it comes to like white fashion models. Again, no offense. It's racist. Well, no, if they're if they're skinny. So like I know Ashley Graham, but she's plus size. So like if you're just oh, stop, it. stop I, acknowledging me. I just stop. And it. I now know Adam Levine's wife was a supermodel. Well, not supermodel, but she was a Victoria's Secret model. But that's because he had an affair. Um, the, none of this is is relevant. It's not. Um, I'm waiting for I you to really get to. Just the, trying to say, like, I know black supermodels, and then I know like supermodels that I are just plus need you to size. Get to the, so they're getting a divorce. Allegedly, uh, they're getting a divorce, and I, I know they're getting a divorce because I'm a woman. I get it. Um, <clears throat> she has you get what she has supported Tom through his career. Okay, she's bore his children. She sure. sacrificed her own career for for his career. Sure. And from what he has even said, interviews I've heard him host or heard him have, um, he has said that he recognizes the sacrifices she's made. So part of why he was retiring was so that like you sacrifice for me, I'm going to take a step back. You know, I'm going to take care of the house and let you pursue whatever dreams you have because she had dreams too. Uh, as most women do who end up, who choose to sacrifice like themselves for the betterment of their family and rearing children and all that. So this was supposed to be her season. You know, that song coming out like that was her theme song. She was supposed to be coming out. She was probably going to get back. On the you, runway. Is this confirmed with her, her camp? This, yeah. Okay. You got sources on the ground. Top of Heidi Klum, <laughs> who's also a supermodel. Okay. And I believe they're both German, so or maybe Austrian, whatever. Um, so she was gonna get back. She was she was gonna get back on the runway. Okay. She's probably gonna do like one of them shows on Bravo, like run run the runway. Um I'm making this up. I'm I'm working on her marketing. I couldn't, team. I couldn't tell. So all of this, I'm sure she was excited, like, you know, my kids are grown or grownish. You know, they're I think they're at least double digits. The youngest they, they look like they're, they're at least they're, they're 11. Grown. They ain't grown. 11 is grown enough that you don't have they're to big. be. <laughs> they're not grown. So big is they're better big than kids. grown? They're big kids. They're okay, not grown. So that's not what I'm grown saying. is paying light bills. Ain't, 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 no. Not one of them kids is paying a light bill. I mean, they probably could. Put they nothing. probably have more of a net worth than I do right now. I mean, yeah, because they're wealthy. That'll change in the name of Jesus. They're anyway. wealthy. But. So, um, she was probably excited. I can imagine her being like, speculation no she was definitely excited i'm speaking for her she was excited this was supposed to be her season objection your honor speculative (laughs) this is supposed to be her season her husband's finally retired he's putting the game of football aside and she gets to pursue whatever dream maybe she wanted to act maybe she has a wonderful singing voice maybe she wanted to be on the mass singer like you don't know we don't know you know why we don't know because what was it two weeks after retiring her husband went right back to work, um, which makes me wonder if he ever fully retired because somebody had to hold his job. Like they didn't fill his old position. It was an off season. They got eliminated. I think they had been eliminated. And um, yeah, I think he, I think, yeah, it was off season for at least for them. <clears throat> I don't think I understand how off season works because I feel like football season runs off season starts when you're no longer playing. Oh, so he, but didn't he retire in like January? No, I think they, there were rumors that it would be his last season. And I think, Oh, the whole season there were rumors. Yeah. And, and then, then I they think, got out and then when they were eliminated, but then was, he came back like two weeks later. It was, it was very quick. For turnaround. What, training camp. It was a very quick turning around. No, I don't think it was training camp. I think he just announced that he was coming, coming back. back. So yeah. he didn't actually retire. He stepped down. I don't know if he did, did. He file the paperwork. I don't know. I don't know what the. You have to file paperwork to retire. I believe so, especially if there's contracts involved that you would play, however many years. Oh, see, I didn't know this stuff. Yeah, and the retirement is like an. I mean, it's 
it's an official thing so you gotta get i didn't realize that. i thought they just threw the ball and then they were like i'm done um or they got hurt and can't play no more one of the two um but i didn't play professional sports i don't know i don't know nor that. did i so it's unfortunate i guess could have been i'd have a cook line a knife line a you can still get it. You just ain't gonna. You just gonna be a little more, bit more difficult. <laughs> I need you to have two hundred fifty million dollars. We gotta go. We gotta go network. Anyway, so he came back out of retirement. What was that? Has it been a year or two years? Time flies. Like I really it was last, it was last was year. It last year. Okay. So I feel like there was something significant that triggered triggered this one. Um, was it the two weeks that he, or he missed training camp and everyone was speculating he, he was he, on the mess. He missed like, a, like 11 days. Yeah. Um, I don't know that anyone ever really figured out why he missed those days, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but then rumors that she hired a divorce attorney. So I think I personally, the woman in me, I think she's fed up. I think she, and I, I, I stand with Giselle. I had a sign. I stand with Giselle. <laughs> like I that, black, like that random dude in the memes. Yes. <laughs> with I would have spelled her name I wrong. I stand with Giselle. Because I didn't realize it had one S and I put two. Um, <laughs> Nobody, but, nobody's going to see the board. Stop referencing the board. Nobody I, knows it's there. They can't see it. Vanna White. I stand with Giselle. I think, not that I, I condone divorce. I feel like, you know, hopefully they'll work it out. They'll work through it. Um, I do feel if they do work through it, it's unfortunate that it always, it seems like it has to take something drastic before people take other people seriously. I'm sure he wasn't blindsided by this. Um, I'm sure he wasn't like, oh my gosh, I didn't see this coming. I feel like I personally, all my opinion, I think he was selfish. I think he put the game of football ahead of his family. Again, I'm not in their marriage. I'm not in their house. So I, I don't know what he's like in the off season. I don't know if he's like 100% dad. Like when they say I'm going to Disney, like did he take his kids with him or is it just him and the football team? But um, I do, th it does come off as he was very selfish and he, his love for the game of football trumped his love for his family and the promises that he made to his family. So, you know, I could imagine from her perspective, that's probably very frustrating. Like this guy that I've given my life to, I've given him children. He's made me this promise that he didn't fulfill it. And he's essentially made it clear that I'm not that important to him. And my desires are not Sorry, that the important to him. Saw you fall asleep on the right or the left. You were by the wall. I was by the wall. Sorry. I'm just making we sure she was. I want to make sure she about to make a second appearance. These kids be waking up. So yeah. So I don't know if you heard what I said because you were looking. No, I was. I was dual tasking. <laughs> but you always say you can't multitask. I, I can't. What was your last point? <laughs> so I wanted to make sure. I want to be prepared in case she came down. We would have heard the gate. Um, I think my last point was he made it very clear, in my opinion where his priorities lie and mm. his priorities lie in football, his love, whatever football gives him is more exhilarating, more important to him than what his wife and children and her desires and needs are. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That's true. How long you want me to talk? I don't know. I'm I was just, I just want to make sure that you're done before I start speaking. Start and we'll speaking. Be, we'll be you think I'm just staring at you for the you know, staring at you? Well, no. But you saw how, how finely this shirt was, was fitting over here. Bro, if you don't answer, if you don't give a response. Admonishing my. Um, you know, I think about Michael Jordan. I was uh, fortunate enough to catch his second comeback um, when he was 39, I think, with the Wizards. Because I was still living in Virginia at the time, and I never really got to see. I never, I never got to really watch prime Michael Jordan play. Like you see highlights, like everybody mm -hmm. else was seeing. Uh, of course, it wasn't really YouTube back then, but um, I never got to see him. Mm -hmm. I never got to see him live. Never really got to see him play. Um, I remember his last um, last season um, at the end of this the second three peat we would watch the finals, the Eastern conference and then the finals games It was during the summer. And we were vacationing with the Nelsons in Massanutten. 
uh, also known as by my uh, brother Daniel Mass and nothing to do. <laughs> um, and uh, I was like, man, this, this is Jordan. But at the time, I didn't really, I didn't really know the significance of it. But mm-hmm. got to watch him come back with the Wizards, and you know, still dominate at age thirty nine and forty. He played for the Wizards. Yeah. Did well, he was a uh, he had he was like a minority owner, and so the alleged plan was is that he was going to come back play for two years two or three years and then he would basically get his position back i think he was like vice president basketball operations or something like that but a Bolin was like the owner he was like nah because <laughs> mike they went like there was rumors of he just went into the meeting expecting you know to get his position back a Bolin was just like nah bro he said jordan had a fit through a fit but anyways i remember watching the press conference when he announced his comeback and I always remember because I've used it I actually used it today sort of uh, when I was talking to uh, talking to Mark he said it's an itch that needs to be scratched I still got the itch to play and he said I want to make sure it's an itch that doesn't bother me for the rest of my life and I think I remember shortly after that hearing news about he and his wife getting a divorce so it's not really unheard of one for dominant elite athletes to have a hard time letting go of all they've ever known for a sustained career. Um, some just still have a genuine joy and love for playing the game. and can still compete at a really high level, maybe not at the apex, but still relatively high level. Um, and they just have a hard time letting go. So they continue to play as long as their, their bodies hold up. That's not, anything new um but i would imagine for any for any of them who are married for any of their partners that it's hard whether you have whether you're a supermodel whether you're a stay-at-home mom whether you're a teacher like whatever uh you have especially if you have kids you just have to be you have to really sacrifice to support a professional athlete Mm -hmm. because they're always gone like even football you're on the road eight weeks out of the year and even when you're home, when you got practice, you got got to be got training and therapy and treatment and stuff. He's just gone. I mean, imagine basketball, 41, 41 away games, and you got road trips. Like it's tough. I get it. I don't get it. I I can only imagine how tough it is. Um. So if if this whole thing was was spurred by. Tom potentially breaking a promise or just the fact that he said he was done. And then he's like, oh, you know what? I still got the itch. I want to play. I'm still, still good. So better than 75% of the quarterbacks in the league. Um, you know, that would, that would suck. Mm-hmm. That'd be tough. I and mean, I don't think I could, I could understand how, uh, assuming everything you posited is true. Why Giselle, 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 why she might feel that one. But I have a question. No, no, I just, I have a question. This is what I do. I ask questions and you answer them. Um, in line of like the all time greats, right? The all time greats, like creme de la creme. <clears throat> Where would, to sell rank in supermodels i don't know like i told you i only know the black supermodels and the plus size supermodels what, I don't, what do you think um you think she's like top 10 top five top three i mean her net worth is more than her her husband okay so she i won't just pigeonhole her to being a runway mod i'm assuming but that's of, her that's that's when they when, she, when they for. when they got married they called she her was, a what? She was a supermodel. Supermodel, okay. Um, but I'm sure in terms of just fashion overall, she has more stake in the industry, which is why I assume her worth is so high. Um, but to also have the title supermodel, that's an elite. Absolutely. That's an elite club. That's, Super anything. That's your Tyra Banks, your Naomi Campbells, your Cindy Crawford. Like yeah. Those are, they're, not every model gets that privilege of the title supermodel. Understood. So... I I I don't even want to speculate because I'm not 
there were there was a time that I was really into fashion, so I knew supermodels and all of this stuff. That's not me now, so I can't speak on it. But um, I would say she's pretty high up there for the simple fact that she does have the title supermodel or has had the title supermodel. Tom Brady's a goat. He is. The greatest I'm to not, ever. I'm not the, disputing The greatest that. to ever. Uh, I'm going somewhere. The greatest to ever play that position. The GOAT, right? Um, he's he's the legitimate. This can't be life. Hmm? I said, this can't be life. Y'all, she's up again. Oh. Sovereignty strikes again. Um, I just, if y'all have tips on how we can get this child to sleep through the night again in whiskey. her bed. Don't mess with that white. Don't mess with that clear. Because this is exhausting. This is truly exhausting. Liquor. She's not in her bed. No, she's not. She's downstairs. Savi, go back to bed. No, because then she's going to start crying. I can hold her this week. (sighs) Savi. So, um, who's the goat? So, I mean, it's not like you just married to like just any athlete I'm talking over the course of all like all quarterbacks who've ever played the position all NFL players like he's a GOAT and I'm gonna say something really controversial probably maybe maybe not so you're sleeping in Southie's bed tonight (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna take her to bed anyway so I might as well Um, I feel like it's selfish to potentially uh, break up a marriage because your significant other has a job that he doesn't need that they that they that they love to do people go their entire lives and don't find that one thing that gives them fulfillment that gives them joy and it's very rare that someone does find that and they're actually like elite all time great at it like it is so rare I'm 34 years old I haven't found that thing yet so the fact that he was able to find it and he's still able to do it and it's a job at the end of the day like it's a job Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not like he's just you know out here willy nilly He's, he's working and putting his body on the line and his life on the line so to speak every single Sunday And throughout the week, like, I felt like part of marriage is, you know, support, like helping your partner, your spouse find that thing that they love and encouraging them to do that. Now, there's sacrifice involved. Yes. And that's whether what their arrangement was as for them. We don't know. But I just feel like it could be perceived as selfish. If that's the reason why she broke up. I mean, if she was to relaunch this career, right? Like if she had these things that she was going to do, respect, right? I get it. That was their agreement. But can she not do it? Like if you've put it on hold for 20 some years or how, I don't know that they were married is at the beginning of his career, but if you've put it on hold for 10 years or eight years or mm-hmm. whatever, What's like eight more months, assuming, you know, not taking life for granted, not taking health and wellness for granted, you know, things can happen, but genuinely like what career was she getting ready to relaunch? What things was she getting ready to do mm-hmm. that can't be done after the, cause he can't play forever. And he's definitely, are you m- sure? he's def he's much closer to the end um, than the beginning. Like it's, I'm pretty sure this would be his last year. He's 45. Mm-hmm. So I, I I could understand, oh, you promised, right? Because you get that word, that's the word is bond, right? Especially when you're talking about um, being married. But it's his job and he loves it. And he's still really good at it. So I don't, I just feel like it could, I mean, it's kind of selfish. This is my thought. Okay. Um, I think I absolutely think he's selfish. Um, 
I don't know her personally. I don't know <laughs> what her aspirations are. So I can't speak on that. But I do think he's selfish. I think... I'm pretty confident he he probably made a promise to her. Um, but I'm also sure that, well, one, the lifespan of a supermodel is not very long. Um, there's only so long before someone younger, more, especially in this influencer society, people are, are going to fill in. So if she wanted to get back on the runway, that's probably out of the cards for her. Um, Wasn't it probably already out of the cards? It probably was, but maybe she maybe she would have had a chance if, you know, five years ago. Um, I think I have several thoughts that I'm going to hop around. I think it can be... We're already at an hour and eight minutes, just so you... Already? Yeah. I think it can be concerning if your life's joy can only be brought to you by one thing. And I think that can be a danger. I think that's a danger for athletes. Um, but it also makes me wonder about all the other athletes who are able to transition into retirement and find out they, they become, they become sports commentators. They host shows, you know, they coach, whatever. I think that there are other ways. I think it's important to not pigeonhole yourself that even if you are talented at one thing, that that's the only thing you allow yourself to, I'm speaking, no, to have I passion wanna, about. But he has a he has a deal, a broadcast deal once he's done. Okay, so then, so he still stays in the sport. That's well, the thing. Well, yeah, I mean, Charles Barkley is... Yeah, commentates for that's the point that I'm getting to that all of these people like he's not the first great athlete who is on track to retire. It's not like you retire and you are, you're immediately done with your sport like you don't get to touch football anymore. He still has access to it, not in the same capacity, but he he gets like Tony Romo played forever. And I believe now I mean, granted, he's doing commercials, yeah, but for um, his career actually wasn't really that long. But I mean, he even he has found something to do like Peyton Manning, all of these people who have retired, like look at um, Michael Strahan. So it's not like just because you retire, you lose access to the sport, you lose access to working. I think it comes down to one. I'm sure just being the sp like, yes, being an athlete is a lot, but I'm also sure being the spouse of an athlete is a lot in terms of, yeah. like you said, risking your life. Like all it takes is one injury and, you know. Who knows if he's going to make a comeback? I'm sure that's stressful on her every Sunday. You don't know. Like, I, I, again, it's not in comparison to, like, being a cop's wife or something where, like, you're actually putting your life on the line on a regular basis. But there is a risk that comes with being the spouse of an athlete in terms of something could happen and my partner is out. And so I think for someone like Tom Brady, it's better to get out than to be forced out in that that respect but i also think that there's it's almost twofolded if say hypothetically the roles were reversed and maybe she was in fashion and she was supposed to retire so that he could do something and she didn't people would come for her as a mother people w and you 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 always do this like because you you think so objectively but People would people people would not allow her the same grace that they're allowing him that you've even allowed him. He's good at it, and you should support your spouse. People would be like, "You're a mom. You have kids. You need to be there for your family." That's that's what the response would be if, say, she was if she had stayed in the fashion business and maybe he had stepped down from football. She would be the one who stopped Tom Brady from being the greatest that he could have been because she wanted to pursue her career. She wasn't a good mom, like. This also comes to him being a dad. Like maybe, like you had said something about like, well, the kids are grown, like can't you, or older, can't she still pursue? Maybe what she needs to, like you said, that's eight weeks of travel. Maybe she recognizes that one parent needs to be dedicated to the family full time before she can step out and do what she wants to do. So like, the, I feel like there's so much that's not seen when it comes from the maternal side, but from him, it's like, oh, he's got a job it's his job it like it's it, it she's not just trying to you know travel to tulum all the time she wants to work she wants to do more there are lots of women who yes they they understand the maternal oath 
of being a mother and raising kids, but they still desire to do more and they desire to do more while they're still young enough to enjoy it. Not when their kids are 18 and they're empty nesters and now they're just, you know, old and looking at each other. She's still young enough that she wants to be out and she wants to pursue her dreams. So I think that's something that's not taken into account too, that if the roles were reversed, people would demonize her because she's a woman and she's not putting her family first, whereas he is putting his career first. And I've yet to hear anyone really come for the fact that like, you're a dad, you've got three children, two of which are with her that need their father. They're in, in very important developmental ages. They've watched their father grow as a professional their entire childhood. And you know, who knows how much he's missed, but now it's like, your kids also need you too. your wife for all, you know, she might just miss him. She might need like, maybe, you know, she married him in the climax of his career. So she probably hasn't even truly enjoyed being married to him as a not hasn't. She hasn't not that she, she has not had the ability to be married to him as a regular civilian in terms of whatever regular is for them. So I think that there are lots of layers to this that are not being seen. And I, to, I, as a mom, I, as a woman who have my own, you know, yes, I'm a professional, but there are still more dreams and aspirations that I have. I can understand it. I can understand, you know, getting my kids to a certain age where it's okay for me to not have to have my hands in each and everything they do, but still wanting to pursue something for me. So I think it's really selfish on his, on his part, because it's when you go half on a family, you go half on a family and it's not just the kids, it's the marriage. And I think like, if, especially if he had promised her that I'm going to give you your turn, like, and he's acknowledged it. I've heard him say it. Like he recognizes the sacrifice he's made, she's made for him and his career. He owes it to her. And I think he broke a promise and he probably broke her heart in that because it's like, if this is a promise that you can break, like you, you told me you would do this for me and you can't do this for me. What else can't you do for me? What else is going to keep you from, from, being a man and sticking to your word. So I, for him, and I was a big Brady fan for him. I have no sympathy. Like I'm legitimately upset with him because I do think that he, I'm sure from her perspective, she feels like she was, she was given a bill of goods. She was taken advantage of. I gave you kids. I was, you know, your arm candy. I was your beautiful wife. I supported you at your football games. And when it came down to you giving me what you promised me, you couldn't even do that. I'm done. I get it. There's a lot of there's a lot of hyperbole in there. Um heart's breaking. Can't as a man, what can you do? Gave three kids arm candy. Um She gave him two kids. Two kids. You said three. I said he had three. Oh, I had three. Okay, had excuse three. me. My my apologies. Gave him kids. Um, before I respond, uh, I want to go back to your reaction when I made my uh, face because I was curious as to how you were going to prove it was a curious face. So um, one, um, I don't I don't appreciate that reaction. Number one, I'm gonna let you know I don't appreciate it because this is, we talk, we exchange ideas, we exchange point of views, and I'm allowed to either be curious or to disagree. And you don't have to attack my way of thinking just because I make a face. But I know your way of thinking. Um, sure. But you should still uh, allow me to think that way. And it's because I think that way that I am who I am. And I am where I am. So you might want to appreciate that. Now, um, sure. I mean, we're sitting here talking like, and we don't, and we don't, uh, you know, to provide context for you know, those who are listening and not watching. I got Savi sitting here and she's being way more 
This is what she did today. Squiggly. No. She Last wasn't week, she wasn't moving. I felt like she wasn't moving go this back much. And watch. Last week she would not get comfortable. Um <laughs> her butt in the camera. <laughs> uh like we're sitting here talking about and we don't even know what this situation is. No, we don't. I'm sure it'll come out. Um She'll, she's gonna write a tell. It's obviously not surprised that uh you're we're sort of picking sides here, right? Although I feel like I understand more I I understand more both sides than uh than you do one when you retire and playing even though you may be around the sport there's a difference between not being able to play and being around the sport there's a very big difference um i don't know it i haven't experienced it to the degree that i would imagine a professional athlete does but like it's it's, it's not you can't just say Oh, you can still be around the sport. You can still commentate. You can still coach. It's not the same. It's just not. I'm and not you either, saying it's and you the either, same. And you either you either know that or you don't. Like you either know it like intimately or you don't. I, mean, I can understand that to an extent, just in terms of what mm. I do professionally and what but I, mean, I if, wish I was doing, being behind the scenes and knowing that I'm more of a for in the forefront person. Like that's tough for me. That's something I grap- grapple with every single day. Like I don't enjoy. That's something you aspire to do, not something you've. I've had taste done. of it and I've stepped away from but, it. Okay, but you had a taste of it. You weren't. Because we weren't able to find out whether or not you were elite. So I would say it's fair to say you weren't elite at it because mm-hmm. you didn't do it long enough and you didn't do it over a 20 year period. It's just different. Like, so imagine the little taste that you have of it, multiply it by like a thousand. Okay. So you can be around it and that may, actually makes it worse, right? You sitting there, like I'm sure Tony Romo was sitting there like, oh man, I'd have hit that, like I'd have hit that throw like, and thing like memories coming back and the fact that his career wasn't as long as I'm sure he would have wanted to because injuries kind of forced him out. So it's, it's not, it's not as simple. And maybe, maybe I'm, I'm being unfair and, and you, you didn't paint it as it being simple, but it no, felt, it, it felt like the way you described it, like you can still be around the sport. Well, yeah, you can be around it, but it's not the same as being in it and like being the one under center, calling the shots, throwing the game, winning touchdown and all that stuff. So, um, you know, it's, it sucks. It's unfortunate divorce, potential divorce separation, you know, it's messy. There's kids involved and then they're high profile. So everybody's going to be in their business. Like, so, um, my only hope is that if, if it does happen, you know, they're able to, um, find, find a way that it works out for the best for everybody especially for the kids. Um, And everybody can find happiness because that's what it's all about. But I, uh, I can, I could, I could get to a place where I can understand why, if this is true, why she would be upset if he did actually break a promise. Cause you know, like I said, it was her word. Yeah. I'm sure her feelings were hurt. My feelings are hurt for her. In her heart. Yeah. I mean, if someone, that was a little, that was a if, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe. I'm sure if some, if you, if you have been waiting for a certain moment to then be able to pursue things, yeah, that could break your heart. That's like, wow. Yeah. Like, I he, guess he retired. I'm sure once he retired, she like had plans. Like, okay, <laughs> I can start, you know, doing this. I can do this. She probably had conversations like, with right, him. All right, Tom. I got the kids' catches on the refrigerator. Yeah, I'm gone. She, she was probably like, I'm Tom. Out. You know, I've talked with this person. You know, may, they said I can be in Paris Fashion Week. Like, she probably like was ready. Like, she probably had a plan ready. So I'm really sure that did. Like, I mean, broken heart. Everyone defines that differently, but I'm sure that there was an emotional hurt that she did feel like he took this from me. It was a bit much. I don't, I I actually don't think, like, I do think you can, you can, someone can break your heart. I think that when certain things, when your partner does, that can, it can really hurt. It can break your heart. Like, wow. I'm sure on top of everything else in terms of like, and just the idea if I had to put myself in her shoes, I'm sure her thoughts are he's really putting football over 
me. His I mean, wife. the only reason they met was football. Yeah, but just because of that doesn't mean. I mean, like, not, does that not also for, mean he's not, not interested in pursuing? Like, even just your marriage itself. Like, you're not interested in pursuing our marriage in a different level. Beside, like, our whole marriage, you've been, you know, a quarterback. You've been playing games. Like, this is an opportunity for us to get to know each other on a deeper, deeper level to build a different kind of relationship. That's not about a like a football schedule. That's what eight months out of a year. Like, yeah. that's that. Maybe there's a romanticizing that she had imagined too about him retiring for them together. So, you know, I'm sure that did break her heart. Like, because I feel like you have to have a broken heart to get to the point where you're consulting divorce attorneys. Like you're not just annoyed when you go to an, a divorce attorney. Like there is there is a genuine hurt that's deeper than just like he hurt my feelings. Yeah, I think he broke her heart, and I think that's why you know she's there and she's meeting with sages, people who are burning sage and stuff. So I feel for her, I really do, because I couldn't imagine some. I couldn't imagine feeling as if a sport was more important in my spouse's life than me and my children. And that's how this in from my perspective plays out. See, I don't, I don't, that's what you're doing. I, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to understand the framing because it it seems I don't know, maybe it is that black and white and maybe I just I have to sit with it for a while. But I I think because you, we there's don't, like a male barrier no, and no, a former athlete barrier. No, I which I'm also a former athlete, but I don't, I don't want to. You don't see it? I, I think I, I need I, you to see it. No, I don't. Because if you don't see it, then I feel like that's something that we could have to deal with. I don't want one to make it a male or, or female, a man, woman thing, um, it, it, a motherhood, a fatherhood thing. Uh, I feel like, I feel like those lines get drawn all the time. And I don't know that it's always necessary to like frame something as like, but it is because even you in your example, you said, like, I wouldn't understand because I'm not an athlete. I haven't, you know, been goat status. We don't know um, how his kids feel. Uh, we don't know what his relationship is like with his kids. Uh, we don't know what his relationship is like with his wife. We don't know what his wife is or isn't yearning for. Um, so I think it's I think it's a little premature um, while we could speculate, obviously the whole thing is speculation. Yeah, this whole, this whole conversation, conversation is, speculation. is speculation, but I, I don't know. I, I'm just, it's not something I really cared about, but now that we're talking about it, I'm just trying to think and really process how I feel on the fly. So that's why I'm sitting here. I think I would I faces. put myself in it. One, just, I think women by default have a way of empathizing with other women differently than men do with other men so i think there's something about motherhood and like it's like an elite club of being a mother and understanding you know sacrificing there's an elite club of being a wife and just understanding supporting a partner so i think you know through this i've just been able like trying to process like what extreme would get me to the point of this man who brings in millions of dollars a year playing this sport came out of retirement that I would divorce him. And that's what I would have to assume. I, like I said, I'm not Giselle. I don't know Giselle. I don't know Tom, but this is just like breaking things down as a woman and all the things that like, for the most part, I feel like people can take a lot emotionally. You can take a lot from someone before you finally crack. So it had to be, there had to be just a lot of just tapping, 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 tapping before the glass shattered. And that's just how I interpret it. I, I could be extreme. Like she could have just been like, I am tired of dealing with stinky jerseys, even though I feel like NFL players don't bring their jerseys home. So that's irrelevant, but it could have been any number of things that, that triggered it. This is me speculating just as a woman, as a mom, as a woman who's still, you know, pursuing career goals and and understanding taking professional step backs in certain areas <clears throat> for the sake of your kids. So, you know, like, I mean, back when you were traveling for work, 
we can like we couldn't have two people who had two traveling jobs because we had a kid at the time someone had to be home i mean to be to be fair i mean i've taken you have a step back in you this definitely season have. so i understand I, I too understand what it's like to sacrifice and take a back seat i the whole reason i quit the job that i was working with so i could be home more i told you not to well, I'm the leader of the household. Sometimes the decisions I make, you may not always agree with, but I got to make the best mm-hmm. decision with with I'm where I'm at. I didn't ask you to, and I encouraged you, and I and I encourage. Nah, you not to. so you could like in ten years be like, <laughs> you've been on this road long <laughs> enough. It's time for me to have my career. But like, nah, chick, you told me to keep this job. No, but that's the thing. We have both made sacrifices for the better and continue of each and continue to do yeah, so and we'll continue to do so like even right now we are in a season where you're sacrificing more than i am um God knows I but am. that season will that season will shift i'm still doing a lot oh, i hope so we're both like we're both we're both but we're in a place where we're both sacrificing in some capacity um mine is probably my mental health <laughs> i'm struggling but like but that's that's a thing that's that's what i'm trying to get to in so many words that's what marriage is like it's you have seasons of sacrifice and i have seasons of sacrifice it wouldn't be a fair marriage if i was always sacrificing for you not that i wouldn't do it but that would also be your responsibility to also recognize like babe i recognize that you have sacrificed and sacrificed and sacrificed so that i can get to c-suite wherever you aspire to be I will give you your moment. I will give you your turn. It's just so long. It's just so long as it ends when you feel like it should. Otherwise, I'm putting my career. No, I think it my career is more and more say, important than when you. If you make a deadline promise, like you know, in 2025, you never file the papers. In 2025, <laughs> the retirement papers. I'm going to you know step back so that you can have a moment. That's that's completely different. And I feel like he, I feel like that's where it is. I feel like he gave a firm day time. Like this is when I'm going to retire and got her hopes up and then, you know, destroyed those dreams. Yeah. And and that's uh, where the issue is like yeah. in marriage as a like, <clears throat> part of the success in marriage is you have your high season. I have my se- high season. We have high seasons together. There are moments you have to sacrifice. There are moments I have to sacrifice. Like that's just part of it you add parenthood into it as well there are moments there are nights you have to be up late there are nights i have to be up late i gave up my whole body for these little people to push their heads out that's a sacrifice you always sacrifice too like it's just it, it it's it's an unfortunate tit for tat sacrifice do I, I don't know what physically you no, can I'm, do i'm a little uncomfortable with you saying i owe a sacrifice always like i'm gonna wake up i'm gonna wake up in the middle of the night my stomach like is wide open <laughs> you always give me that kidney um, <laughs> I'm like wait you, a minute <laughs> you always like see like a burning bush in the corner like, of the room but that's that's supposed to be, that's what partnership is and i just feel like that's what she didn't get and i feel for her in that okay well, uh, we're at an hour 30 do you want to hit one more or are we done I don't know. I feel like you're done. I'm not done. I'm just saying we're at hour 30. A sleeping I don't want to do a two hour podcast. This ain't drink champs. It could be. No, it won't be. You don't want to sacrifice two hours of your life? No. <laughs> well, editing? No, not, not on my two weeks off. No, I ma'am. Mean, we can save these two topics for another episode. You want to do You want to do a two for this week? Yeah. You want to do two episodes? Mm-hmm. Let's do one Friday. Drop one Friday? Record one Friday. No, you want to record again and then drop another one. Okay, let's record Thursday. Turn no, I'm not time. recording Thursday night and then dropping editing overnight to put it out Friday. So we then can when rec- are we going to record? We record tomorrow. It's Tuesday. Oh, it is Tuesday. Yeah. Okay, fine. During yeah. the day. Whatever, I'm off. You tell me what works for you. No, I got I to gotta make moves right quick in the morning. I got to get to Durham. All right, so uh, that's Rush Vibes this week maybe episode another episode on friday but this is going to be a wednesday drop so um savi has made her second straight appearance so hopefully y'all are getting familiar with her although i don't want you to get too familiar because we need y'all praying please pray in agreement that this child i don't know whatever she's whatever she's dealing with will break she will break free from and be able to sleep through the night without being one of us being in the bed with her or being in our bed if y'all have tips, tricks, please share. Like, let, cause she used to sleep. Whiskey. 
I'm not giving a two year old whiskey. It's a little drop. Don't they do it in Africa? No. Don't they do it in Ghana? Then you no. say your people used to put like a little drop or something. I in never you. said that. That's your people, your gone people. Maybe. But yeah, they if work. y'all have any tips, tricks, any special prayers. What please? about that juice uh, Davro told you about? Oh, he did say. Some tea or something. No, I want her to just sleep through the night. I don't want her waking up because I know she could do it because she used to do it. So let us know. I don't know if it's a developmental leap, if she's got teeth coming in or what, but I just, I can't. She poked me in the eye this morning. She rolled over and swung her fist and hit me in the eye. Dang. I was so upset because she has her own bed. So Mm. yeah, that's what we're struggling with. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough, especially when you put a pillow up and push her to me. I didn't put a pillow up. You usually put a pillow between the, between you. That's because she kicks me in my back, so I try to put her in the middle of the bed. We've got we each have two pillows. You could put we could literally just box her in. It's not how that works. You Mother Teresa over here. You. I'm not Mother Teresa. I'm just a are. mom who's sacrificing. You mother, you mother Teresa. Yeah, unnecessarily. Anybody asking you to do it? Y'all, bye. Exactly. Come over here. <laughs> it's like that. It's like that meme. Literally, my job. It's like that meme. Uh, where old buddy shoot somebody and so they write a description like something happened and he shoots him and then the the question they put over him where he's standing like perplexed is like why would this happen when he's the one who did it that's you you shooting yourself in the foot and then you be like uh why is this happening what because you, you allow you allow it to happen i'm just saying we could have boxed her in but you chose not to so you got smacked in the face you should have boxed her in so she couldn't have done it with your pillow that's why you got smacked in the face. Cause you, and you're like, I'm a mother. I can't do that. Shh. My mom kicked us out the house for like full days, 100 degree heat. Not at two. You sure? Yes. <laughs> I was, it was close. I, I was three and a half. She was not putting you out at three and a half. The <laughs> door's like, all right, it's summertime. You don't lie. She'd lock the door. Do not lie on your you mother. Come home, like try that. to open the door. I was like, wait a minute. Don't lie on This door's supposed to be unlocked. I'm just saying. Uh, we're on YouTube, which is probably where you're watching this, so you already know that. Be sure to like, subscribe, uh, Facebook, connect share. with us, and share Facebook, Instagram. Um, like I said, this hopefully we're gonna get two episodes out this week. This is episode seventy of Rush Vibes. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna say that every single week until we hit a hundred, until we hit that hundo. Like this is crazy. I never would have thought summer 2020 when we started doing this that we would get to 70 episodes i didn't think we'd stick with it that long i'll be honest with you i didn't think we would i didn't think we'd stick with it you didn't i thought the world would open back up we'd go back to doing life as normal but here we are we are doing life as normal we got signs in the in the rush vibe studios 2.0 we got this thing's crazy. We should need to start making some money at some point. But you know, we went back and, uh, or I, I went back, started watching some of our older episodes, like our first, first episodes. It was rough. I miss that. Setup. Considering we were like, we'd had, we had the one camera, but we were looking at the monitor <laughs> over here. So we were literally talking, looking at ourselves. I mean, we still do it now. I do too. I'm like, but, I really need you to lift up my monitor. So but, I can um, look at the camera. We, but we only had one camera at the time and it was dead center. And we were like <laughs> talking over here. Or looking over here as we talk, um, but we had some we had some gems, mm-hmm. the twisted T vibes. We had the uh, couple movie reviews. Mm-hmm. We had my cousin Mark on. Mm-hmm. Of course, that was that was later on in, in the season. That was kind of midway through the season. I had Cynthia. I remember trying to set up the room for the interview. It was mm-hmm. it was a nightmare. So yeah, we've come a long way. We've got much farther to go. Uh, tune in Apple, Spotify, Google, all that good stuff. Well, I think I'm gonna join some other. There's some other uh, companies trying to do some things in the podcast discovery place. So I think we're gonna uh, put Rush Vibes on some of those platforms. Try to be some like early adopters, and maybe one of those platforms take off. We got a lot of followers and whatnot. Maybe that'll help us out. Um, and stay tuned. We have uh, some exciting news about. Uh, other things that we're uh, that we're working on that we think y'all would be interested in. So, why you look like? Because I don't, you don't know, know what I'm talking, talking about. about. Oh, so stay tuned for that. All right. We're
we're out here. We're out of here. Hopefully, Sovereign will stay asleep once we take her back up to her bed. And uh, I'm going to continue to enjoy <laughs> my time off. And we'll be back to talk about a couple more topics later on this week. So, y'all be good. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Rush Vibes, we out. Peace. Bye. Going through some growing pains. Yeah. Nothing but some growing pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now Can't stop me now, can't stop me now Yeah, I done